Welcome back to the Brian Crumby Radio while we're on second and 60. So that was a fascinating uh, conversation with the president and CEO of Drone Delivery Canada of what uh, they've got planned at the Edmonton Airport. We're now joined by Myron Keane, who is uh, the vice president of, is it business services? Um, at Air service, Air service and business development. Air services and business development at the Edmonton International Airport. And uh, Mr. Keane, Myron, um, the, uh, the president suggested that uh, this is really quite a, um, an innovative approach that uh, your airport has taken to allow drones to actually fly from the airport. Tell us a little bit about this uh, project, if you could. Sure, absolutely. And um, we're really excited to partner with Drone Delivery Canada and with Michael and his team at, at that entity, a great, great group of, a great group of folks. From the airport perspective, we believe that drones and um, autonomous systems operating um, out of airports are going to be the future. And the electrification of aviation as being the first step has really been done through drones. So back electrification to, of aviation. Electrification of aviation because drones run on electric, right? Yep. So uh, it's kind of a stepping stone to to bigger, large electrification, which we're seeing in the fleet on smaller aircraft now being electric. United just ordered a bunch of airplanes that are electric that do short haul distances on electric airplanes. And so drones, there's a couple of things that we're really keenly interested in. One is we believe drones and autonomous systems are a future technology. And if we fast forward 10 years, that package that comes to your house on the last mile will probably be done by an autonomous vehicle or a drone or a robot. And so we're starting to see this happen in different sectors. And when we were looking across the Canadian landscape, Drone Delivery Canada is really not just a Canadian leader, but a global leader in this space. And so we're really keen to work with with Michael, Michael and his team, and and we're connected through Air Canada, actually one of our other great partners, to um, look at doing drone delivery from the airport. So we were the first airport in Canada to implement drone operations into our airport. It started with wildlife control with a robotic bird called the Robird. It's a falcon bird that flaps its wings and chases away birds. So it's You're a non- kidding, really seriously. It's a, a drone that flaps its wings. Correct. It's a Robird. It's a, a drone. It's a falcon drone. A uh, partner of ours out of Calgary and based here in Edmonton as well. We saw that technology together in Tokyo. It was a Dutch technology. They've since acquired 100% of that company, um, domiciled it into Canada, into Alberta. And we use that to do wildlife control at the airport on a non-lethal bird basis. So we have a drone that's a falcon, flies around, flaps its wings, scares away birds because it's a predator to the birds that are on our airport and they don't come back. So that was how we started in drones. Fantastic. Um you know, I would have thought that, that drones were most applicable when topography is strange um, and or uh, places are remote. And, uh, and I've talked to uh, Michael and Drone Delivery about this in the past where they're uh, doing Indigenous uh, communities uh, up North Ontario and in British Columbia. Um, and particularly if they're flying across water or hills or mountains or something like that, it's a lot more efficient than other forms of delivery. I've actually had the privilege of looking out the window that's probably uh, behind you and you're pretty flat. Um, why does it make sense to use a drone uh, flying uh, around the Edmonton airport in the middle of the prairies? Yeah, so I mean, I think there's a couple of advantages. One is obviously the uh, decarbonization of aviation and the whole goal for everyone to reach carbon neutrality, uh, including our, a lot of our airline partners. And that last and first mile of delivery is typically heavily intensive on uh, in carbon emissions, particularly. So drones are a way to electrify and decarbonize. That uh, that transit that, that part of the transaction when the when the when it's moving, I think that's one. The second for us is really about using drones in different manners that typically people wouldn't think of, um, like wildlife control as an example we used. We have another example where the precision approach, the pappy lighting at the end of the runway, typically you need to fly a jet in and and manage that to check the lights are at the proper settings for the warned pilots to pull up or, or or they're too high or too low. We can do all that. We've done that with two partners from Europe and another partner, and in, including uh, um, uh, not Drone another partner, and that was able to be done and replace the jet flying for four hours. We did it in 30 minutes. Really? We're using drones for a lot of unique enhancements for a safety perspective, including runway inspections, building inspections, uh, pavement marking inspections, uh, things that you can't catch with the normal eye when you're driving the vehicle. So we're doing some pretty unique things with some great partners, but the most unique thing I think we're going to be doing is working with this project we've announced with Drone Delivery Canada to partner together to actually do a real business need of delivering packages the last mile from the airport across an active run across an active highway, busiest highway in Alberta, to an actual business. And the partners in that with Drone Delivery Canada's leadership are 
forward thinking developers and businesses that know that this is the future and want to make sure they can develop it right for their future commercial and residential developments. Fascinating. Um, is there any safety issues uh, with interaction with active runways? Yeah, I mean, always from the airport perspective, our safety and security are a top priority. So that's the number one focus we have as the airport. Um, we do a lot of work with our regulatory bodies, whether they be Transport Canada or Nav Canada, to prove that the technologies are safe. And we always say, don't bring a drone to the airport and fly it. Everyone, like lots of people buy drones. That's not the person who should come here. These are regulated, they're piloted systems. They're um, highly controlled and, and they have a lot of very specific uh, safety requirements around them and a lot of testing on them. So it's not any drone that can be flown in this manner, but for a licensed pilot and a licensed systems like Drone Delivery Canada's that has gone through all the safety testing, they're very safe to use. And we've been running them at the airport here now for, this is our seventh year. Really? And do you think uh, other airports are doing the same thing? Or are you in a leader in this, uh, in this innovation? Yeah, I think it, well, Edmonton is actually one of the global leaders in this space. We're not alone. There are others experimenting this space and, and doing similar uh, activities, but not to the extent and the breadth of what we're working on. And again, it's not the airport itself. It's all these great partners like Michael at DDC, uh, Canada, like the folks at Robert, like other folks that we have from, from Europe and others that are experimenting in this space. But what excites me the most is the Drone Delivery Canada side, because the autonomization of package delivery is happening in other markets already globally where your package is being delivered by an autonomous vehicle. If you're in California, your grocery delivery is coming in Northern California, your groceries are being delivered by an autonomous van. It's unbelievable. An autonomous van. An autonomous van. So and you, you think that uh, the, you know, the big planes that come into your airport filled with cargo are gonna uh, unpack and then put their, their, their stuff on drones and fly around Edmonton? Some of it may, it's not gonna be everything. It'll be a, a portion of the market, right? It has to be the right good, the right weight and where the right location. But the applications for drones are, Brian, are very broad. So it's finding the right business case and the right niche. And what we believe Drone Delivery Canada has done is create the right safety framework, have the right products and have the right um, protocols in place. And with those three together, with an innovative management team, uh, a very safe and tested and tried um, system and protocols, safety protocols, and the end user cost consumer, which is a case of the partners that are partnering in this uh, delivery with uh, this unit with uh, Drone Delivery Canada, this, this one year program, uh, we have the ready ingredients to, to really push this forward within Canada. Now, I understand why this might benefit you from a, a decarbonization standpoint, as you're talking about, but uh, you know, if what you're doing is solving the economics of the last mile of delivery, that's going to benefit. Uh, you know, the packaged uh, goods uh, suppliers, uh, courier companies, et cetera, not you. Why would you be so interested in it as well, an airport? Well, think about it from an airport perspective. If there's infrastructure that needs to be built for a road and we have less roads to build, it's less things to maintain and that you have to spend capital on. Um, and when you start to think of some of Brian, some of the other, uh, other benefits of it, I mean, there, around any of these innovation clusters, you know, after safety and security, our job in our airport city sustainability campus is to drive economic benefit, economic value, job creation. And so we, we, on the airport, we have something called Alberta Aerospace and Technology Center. It's one of five of our, one, five, one of our five incubators. And combined, we have 177,000 square feet of incubator space for technology companies. And it's everything from food incubation and acceleration to drone companies, to plastic replacement companies, to, we even have a worm farm here. Where a we worm actually, farm? We have What's a worm the benefit farm. of a worm farm? Uh, worm farms are used for protein and they're used in certain products and worm casking. And so the, that products get exported to European countries. So we experiment in all kinds of unique things. It's quite an astonishing place to work. We have a hemp license at the airport. So there's a large use for drones in agriculture and the agricultural inspection. And so there'll be some, one of the areas we're also focusing on drones in the future. So some pretty unique opportunities. You've also got something called Airport City Solar. Tell us about that. Yeah, Airport City Solar is the world's largest solar farm at an airport. It'll start construction next year and be finished in 2023. It's 627 acres, 120 megawatt solar farm. Um, it will take up the equivalent of about 27 to 28,000 homes off the grid. Uh, it'll produce 200,000 megawatts of power a year. And well, the equivalent of about 106,000 tons of carbon out of the atmosphere every year from power, atmosphere out of the po from power. So in Alberta, of course, we have a lot of sunshine and we don't have the same um, uh, benefits in some regions that have massive electrical power generation opportunities. We have yep. some but not as many. So solar and wind, there are other great opportunities to produce uh, uh, less carbon intensive energy for, for use in the grid. 
I've been uh, in Edmonton both in the summer and in the winter. You've got a wonderful long day in the summertime. You've got a pretty short day in the wintertime. Isn't that going to impact actually do, but what's Yeah, no, that's a great question, Brian. What's, what's uh, interesting with the winter here is that Edmonton on average is about 331 days a year of sun, which is pretty high for any yeah. city. Like today was beautiful. It's got a little overcast now, but um, the neat thing in the wintertime is with the solar partner we have and the panels they are looking at, they're bifacial. So not only you collect sun a power from the sun above you collect it from the reflection off the snow and oh, really? so yeah so you have you know if you have only if we only have eight hours of power eight hours of sun you have 16 hours of power gathering between the two panels unbelievable i understand so, you're one of the first airports in the world if not the first airport in the world to sign something called the climate pledge what's that yeah great great thank you for that brian the airport authority working together with amazon and global optimism signed the climate pledge and it's Amazon and it, well, it's not it's not just Amazon it's a group of companies over 100 companies companies like Mercedes Benz, uh, Toyota, um, large companies that are in the aerospace sector like Vanderlande that's a big large baggage producer, um, large um, produce, produ production companies food companies have signed this some of the biggest in the world and what it is is a commitment to decarbonize and lower and meet the Paris climate targets right. 10 years earlier than what's committed so. The world's committed to 2050 of Paris climate, Canada's committed to 2050, and our commitment is the airport for our ecosystem and our scope one and two that will commit to being net zero by 2040. Congratulations. Good luck on that. And then you've also got some deal with Air Canada on uh, an Air Canada sustainability partnership. What's that about? Yeah, so what we're really keen on doing is we're interested in decarbonizing the entire aviation ecosystem. And that's not only a movement of, of what we can control as the airport, but the movement of goods and people to, through, and from the airport. So all factors of, of aviation. The only way that works is by having partnerships. And so we, we Air Canada is one of the airlines we've partnered with and, and uh, we, we're very keen on how forward looking they are. Um, and so we partnered together to help decarbonize all segments of the aviation, all the segments of the aviation uh, infra ecosystem. So that includes things like ground vehicles, um, airside vehicles, Eventually, the airplane, which will run on some other form of, of, of fuel beside jet fuel in the interim sustainable aviation fuels. So we've got a very broad partnership that we're bringing to bear with uh, and the ecosystem to actually test and trial and implement new technologies to decarbonize aviation. We're chatting tonight with uh, Myron Keane. He's the Vice President of Air Service and Business Development at the Edmonton International Airport. We're going to take a break for some messages and come back with some concluding comments in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Brian Crombie Radio while we're on Second Night 60. We're chatting tonight uh, with uh, the President and CEO of uh, Drone Delivery Canada, who's told us about a great new partnership that he's got with uh, Edmonton International Airport, where they're running drones on uh, the airport uh, grounds. And uh, now we're with uh, Myron Keane. He's the Vice President of Air Service and Business Development at the Edmonton International Airport. Uh, Mr. Keane, um, you're dramatically expanding your air cargo operations, I understand. Uh, why? You know, I would have thought Edmonton's at the at, at, you know, out of way far north. And then I hear that you're actually, you think, closer to Asia than uh, airports on the West Coast. Tell me about that. Yeah, no, thank you for that, Brian. Uh, Edmonton is, is the most northern city in Canada. 95 to 98 percent of the population in Canada live within 100 miles of the border. And out of the other two million, one and a half million live in the Edmonton metro region. And so geographically, what we think we're north, we're really center of Alberta. And most of Canada lives in the south of Alberta. So we always get a good chuckle when uh, it says we the north in Toronto and it's so far south to half of Canada, they're most of them Canada's north of Toronto. But anyway, we, we still cheer for the Raptors because that's our team, but we appreciate um, it. I, I, always, I always get a good chuckle at that. Uh, when you look at the earth and you flatten it out here, how planes fly, they fly over top of the pole, of the North Pole. So if you're coming from Asia and going to the East Coast of the United States, you're flying right over top of Edmonton, literally. We, our area control center by NAV Canada controls the second largest airspace in the world up to the Arctic Circle, just to Vancouver, almost to the Ontario border, and then down to the border with the United States. Second largest. What would be the first largest? Russia. The Russian airspace over the North Pole. Oh, really? Okay. So, so that's kind of interesting from that perspective, but also when you go from Europe to the West Coast of the United States, you cross right over top of Edmonton. So an example of the, the flight times is you think, well, Edmonton's pretty far away. We're, we're inland. We're north. What does that mean? A flight from Hong Kong to Vancouver, Hong Kong to Edmonton is nine minutes difference. So Edmonton is not that far. And if you look at where we are geographically, it's not just about air. It's about road and rail and ship. 
So Prince Rupert, which is Canada's deep water port, the newest port in Canada, and growing at a dramatic pace, the, it's, it's the shortest distance between Asia and North America. And the slowest portion of your transportation is in a boat. So if you can get out of a boat earlier, get it on train in Prince Rupert, you can get leave Asia, be in Prince Rupert in 11 days, the next day be in Edmonton and have your goods in Edmonton in 12 days versus some of the stuff on the US West Coast or East Coast being up to 58 days by the time you get the goods out of the ship. So the time is money and transportation logistics. So there's a shipping side, the rail side, the road side, and again, being where we are in Alberta, going east to west, Edmonton is the only location in Western Canada you can reach everywhere else in 24 hours by trucking. Because we're far enough north that we can access down to Calgary in the south, all the way to Vancouver and right to the Ontario border within 24 hours. So it's quite a unique opportunity where we are. And if you look at where both class one railroads, both Canadian North, Canadian, Canadian National, excuse me, from Prince Rupert and Canadian Pacific CP from Vancouver, the first place those train lines cross class one and major cities, Edmonton. So it's literally right at the nexus of transportation. So air, rail, road, and boat, Edmonton's a great place for logistics and has always been a trading place for, for um, people. As you look back, our heritage here goes back 10,000 years and it's actually a trading post for indigenous. So it's quite a unique, uh, unique full circle back to where we were 10,000 years ago. Myron Keene, uh, Head of Business Services and uh, Airport Services and uh, Business Development at uh, Edmonton International Airport. Thank you so much for joining us and telling us a little bit about, uh, about what's happening in Edmonton. And more importantly, uh, uh, well, actually, I think more importantly is what you told us about in Edmonton, but the drone delivery um, project is really quite fascinating. Let me ask you one last question. Uh, the CEO of drone delivery is telling us that uh, the Jetsons is coming in the future, that, that actually um, unmanned airborne taxis were coming. What do you think? I, I would agree with them. And, and there's actually one of the best companies in the world that's producing this and now moved into Canada, Canadian airspace and they're actually going to start producing their uh, equipment in Montreal. It, it's coming. It's coming faster than we think. I, it, I heard a good quote today. Mayor, Mayor Don Iverson from the city of Edmonton said it and he heard it. I think it was Al Gore who said it. People don't under, they underestimate the pace of change. It seems very slow at, fast, at first and then all of a sudden you don't realize how quick it actually goes and you can't keep up. And I think that's what we're really seeing in this autonomous systems and a uh, drone space. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm on every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on 960 AM. You can stream me online at saga960am.ca and all my podcasts and webcasts are available after the fact on my website, briancrombie.com, on YouTube, on Audible, on Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get podcasts or video casts, including YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Myron, really appreciate it. Good night, everybody. Pleasure, Ryan.